We good? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to the talk, this last talk of the day. Uh, my name is Alex Sung, and I'm the program manager for Bluetooth in Windows. My team owns device connectivity, so not just Bluetooth, but also other technologies like USB and HID. And I'm here today to talk to you about how you can now write Windows Store apps uh, for devices that use these technologies to connect to Windows PCs. And more specifically, we're going to talk about the concepts behind using the device protocol APIs. And then we're going to show you an example of how easy it really is to do. Um, so I know that many of you were in the last session in this room uh, where Dean and George talked about the concepts behind the device protocol APIs. So we're going to change things up a little bit and just highlight, uh, re-highlight the key points that they covered, and then we'll jump into the RFCOM specific information. And for those of you who missed that last session, it will be available online. Um, at the end of the session, we'll have pointers to all the other talks that are related. OK. So for protocols such as Bluetooth, HID, USB, uh, and Wi-Fi Direct, Windows 8 primarily enables hardware developers to provide for apps that use these technologies by providing an app uh, package that includes a device driver, device metadata, and the app itself. And this is uh, really focused on um, dedicated vertical scenarios for that specific device. So in Windows 8.1, we provided access to these uh, protocols directly in the Windows runtime. And this makes writing apps uh, for these technologies much easier, as there's no driver to deliver, and also has the added benefit of allowing these apps to work on um, ARM-based PCs running Windows RT. So for the hardware developers in the audience, that means that you can now allow others to write applications to your devices. Um, you can use a standard protocol, or you can take a, your own proprietary protocol and publish it and create an ecosystem of applications or apps around your device. And so for software developers, um, the app developers, um, this means that you can now uh, write, take a many off-the-shelf um, off retail devices and start writing apps to them, and then deliver them via the Windows Store, just as you would any other app. And then finally, for the hobbyists and the tinkers who'd like to create their own devices, Windows is now a really powerful platform with which you can bring your inventions to life. So let's take a quick look at an example of what you can do uh, with these APIs. Ross, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm sure many of you have seen the Sphero before, um, and you may have seen the Sphero races, <laughs> uh, the Sphero races over in the main exhibition hall, and maybe you've even seen the Peacekeeper um, in an earlier session today. Um, <laughs> so the Peacekeeper, like the Sphero, uh, is controlled over Bluetooth, and Ross and Adam from Orbotics are using an application that is written using our Windows runtime uh, Bluetooth. RFCOM APIs to control the device. And as soon as we get to the open area, <laughs> it'll work a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so some st stats for you about this device. Um, as an example of what you can do with our APIs, uh, the Peacekeeper is it's three feet in diameter. It weighs. Whoa. <laughs> Live demo. Uh, 150 pounds. It's capable of moving uh, over 20 miles an hour, but it's currently limited to just three miles an hour for your safety. Um, and it's more than just a remote controlled, um, like, uh, rotating orb. It has a lot of sensors um, in there. Uh, it has a three-axis accelerometer and gyro. Uh, it tracks its movement in 3D space, and it can provide feedback, like uh, for when it collides into an object or a person. Um, so you can also use it as a controller. And Orbotics is um, providing a SDK uh, that you can write Windows Store apps with, um, as well as the sample app that they're using to control this device. And later on, we'll have uh, links to um, to where you can get those things. Um, and the most important thing, I think, here is that 
uh, on the inside, this, this is the exact same thing um, as this Sphero here. And you can do the exact same things with this Sphero as you see with the Peacekeeper. Um, probably with a little less damage <laughs> to the exterior surroundings. Um, and so I, had, I need to provide a disclaimer that your results may vary, but Robotics um, gave some feedback um, about the usage of their RAPIs. And they found that as compared to um, other operating systems, uh, the Bluetooth uh, API provided them with a higher sampling frequency. Um, they were able to sustain higher throughput levels and uh, with lower latency. So it made for a lot more fluid uh, control and that re required less compensation when in use. Um, so for those of you with access to Sphero, uh, Orbotics, um, you know, they're providing the SDK so you can write uh, apps for it. And then just a little bit later in this session, uh, we'll take a look at um, our own sample app. Uh, it's a very simple version that shows you how do you, you can uh, use our APIs to talk to a Sphero. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. So let's briefly revisit the concepts that uh, Dean and George went over uh, in the last talk. There are three main concepts. And the first is to establish user trust. So as developers, we want our users to be aware of what our apps can do and that they know that they're in control of, what the, uh, of that access. Uh, so we provided a simple way for you to uh, declare the, um, the device capabilities in, in the app manifest. And this ensures that the applications can only access the capabilities that you've declared and also provides the user um, the ability to see the high-level capability prior to installing the app. And then lastly, it also allows them to revoke access whenever they want. So as, after you've um, established user trust, the next thing you need to do is enumerate the device. And this is built upon existing windows.enumeration, um, excuse me, windows.devices.enumeration APIs that already exist in Windows 8 and builds upon similar patterns as other device-specific uh, APIs. And then lastly, once you've enumerated a device, you simply um, communicate to it in a protocol-specific way. And this will be familiar to those of you that are familiar with these protocols. But even if, even if you're not, uh, the APIs are easy to use, and we have uh, samples and uh, SDK documentation to guide you along the way. So let's take a look at the specifics of RFCOM. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Bluetooth uh, RFCOM, it's essentially a serial port emulation protocol that gives you uh, control over quote unquote classic Bluetooth. And this is the Bluetooth that you've been using for the past decade or more. Um, as with all Bluetooth devices, the first thing you need to do is pair. So we have an inbox uh, Windows user interface to, for pairing. Uh, this ensures that there's a consistent experience across all Windows PCs and also means that your application doesn't have to worry about um, implementing pairing. Um, we've provided a Windows Runtime API for um, the RFCOM client to enable connecting to a remote device. There's also RFCOM server to allow you to host RFCOM services on the Windows PC. And then you communicate it using existing uh, sockets and storage APIs. And one thing I want to make sure that's understood is that um, devices that implement the serial port profile, SPP, um, they will work with this uh, API. So while the device itself might expose a COM port locally to talk over Bluetooth, um, there won't be any problem communicating it via a Windows Store app using sockets. And then lastly, uh, we do have a SDP, uh, that's Service Discovery Protocol, client and server. Um, that, if you're not familiar with it, you probably don't need it. It allows you to publish some information about your service, um, some metadata, maybe like a protocol version or something like that. Uh, but it's not required. So again, we have the RFCOM device service. That's the client. Um, this is going to be the common case. Most apps will be the client that initiate a connection to a remote device. Uh, but for completeness, we also have the RFCOM service provider to allow you to host services. So let's take a look at the client case, which is going to be the most common case.
Okay, this is a simple demo application um, that we've, we're gonna provide uh, online so you can take a look at the code. Um, but it implements all the basic functionality you need to use RFCOM with your device. Um, so I've already prepared this Sphero here and I'm gonna go ahead and enumerate it. Um, that was not, let's try this again. Okay, so I'll go ahead and enumerate. Um, and enumeration will return you a list of uh, all the devices uh, that you're searching for. So here we're presenting that list to the user in a list box. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and shake the Sphero to turn it on. Now it's flashing, indicating that it's awaiting a connection. So we'll go ahead and click on the Sphero here in our list box. And because this is the first time I ran the application, the user gets a prompt for consent. Now I know this is the application that I intend to use and this is the device that I want to, to communicate to. So I'll go ahead and allow this. And at this point, we'll go ahead and we're trying to connect. And now you can see that the Sphero is a solid color indicating that there's a connection present. Uh, we have just a simple color change packet um, that we're writing to the device. And you can see as I click it, um, the Sphero is changing color. And then lastly, of course, we can disconnect and clean up. And now the Sphero is again flashing uh, and awaiting a connection. So now that we've seen an example of the API um, in action, uh, let's talk about the concepts behind using the RFCOM APIs. And we'll go over these concepts and then we'll jump into the code to show you how they get implemented. So the first step here is to declare the cap app capabilities um, in the app manifest. And um, this is a continuation of the material that Dean and George covered. And again, we want to declare the capabilities to provide user confidence in what our app um, is gonna access. So you declare by uh, the capability by name. So for this uh, protocol, we use Bluetooth.rfcom. There's a couple of ways to declare the service. You can use the friendly name. We've provided some friendly names, um, some properties for the friendly names for common RFCOM services. Uh, but you can provide your own proprietary UUID by using the service, service ID type. And, and then optionally, um, you can specify the device ID of the device. And this comes from the device ID profile. It must be implemented on the device. Um, it's a uh, SIG standard profile. And you can specify the vendor ID and the product ID that the device is using. Uh, if you don't care about that, you can just use any. Here's a, an example, a basic example. This will be uh, use, useful for most applications. Um, you can see that we declare the capability by name. Um, in this case, we don't care to identify a specific device, and then uh, we're specifying the serial port service. Uh, as an advanced example, you can have multiple sections uh, to declare for multiple services and devices. Here you can see again, declare the capability by name. Um, the first section uh, specifies a uh, proprietary UUID using the service ID type, and then again, any device. And then that second section um, specifies, ident identifies a specific device that you wanna connect to. And again, use the serial port. So after you've uh, declared the capabilities, um, you want to enumerate the device. And this is using the windows.devices.enumeration API, which takes in as input a device selector which is essentially a string um, with the criteria they want to search for. So we provided a helper function uh, in get device selector for um, Bluetooth specific, Bluetooth RFCOM specific strings. Uh, and then once you find that, um, once the enumeration API returns, it returns a collection of device information objects. So you can either uh, programmatically parse through that collection or you can have the user select as we did in our app, um, sample app. And with that uh, root object, with that uh, object that you want to use, you then instantiate uh, using from ID async. And it's at this time, the capabilities check against the app manifest is done. So you get that consent prompt that you saw. So now we've uh, declared our capabilities and we've enumerated with the device and the user cons has consented. Uh, the next things you need to do are connect and then communicate with the device. So you can connect using the existing windows.networking.sockets API. 
um, and you just connect async with a couple of properties that we provided for you in the host name and the service name, and then you simply talk to the device using existing storage streams. So at this point, you know most everything you need to know to talk to your RFCOM-based device. Um, but you also want to make sure that you know how to write a well-behaved application. And the key part of writing a well-behaved app is to make sure, of course, uh, that you clean up your RFCOM uh, socket objects when your application is suspended. And it's important to do this because if you don't, then on resume, if you try to access those objects again, your application will get an exception. So now that you know how to write a well-behaved app uh, for your Bluetooth RFCOM-based device, let's take a look at the code to show you how simple it is to do. OK, so the first thing we'll take a look at is the app manifest. And you see the capability section is just like our basic example. Uh, we declare the capability by name. Uh, we don't care to identify the specific device here. And the Sphero uses uh, the serial port profile to expose the control. So we have that specified. Um, in the main app code, um, the first thing we do in our app is to enumerate the devices. So you can see here that we're using the windows.devices.enumeration um, windows API to attempt to find all devices um, that expose the serial port service. And this is uh, this property we've provided for some of the more common RFCOM based services. There is a from UUID method that you can use to specify your own proprietary UUID. Um, so we pass in this property to get device selector, which generates the um, the search string for you, and you pass that into find all async. This is a asynchronous call. Um, as we all know, for Windows Store apps, it's important that when we take an action uh, that might take some time, we make it asynchronous so that the app um, stays reactive uh, for the user. So on return, we get this set of device information uh, objects um, that you can either parse through programmatically, or in this case, we add it to our list and then um, show a list to our user. On selecting an object, uh, we go ahead and instantiate the RFCOM um, device service object. And here we need to check for null. This is a common pattern across all the device protocol APIs. Um, and if the consent check fails with the user, it will return null. Um, so we've instantiated. Uh, the user has properly consented. And at this point, we have the device we want to use. So we go ahead and create a socket um, using the host and service name that's provided for you. And then this last uh, property here, the socket protection level, uh, this maps to the uh, Bluetooth link layer security. So in this case, we're using allowed null authentication. So if there's no security, uh, this app will work fine. For applications that require security, you can choose to um, require encryption. Once we're connected, uh, we go ahead and just create this new uh, data writer object. Um, and at this point, the device is connected and ready to use. So here you can, take a, you can see our uh, change color button um, handler. And here we just, uh, we're just formatting a simple color change control packet. And we're writing it to the output stream and then writing it to the device. And that's all you need to do to communicate to the device. Then lastly, to connect or disconnect, our disconnect button handler simply uh, detaches the output stream and then disposes of the socket object. At this point, we've done everything we need to do to communicate to the device. Uh, but there's one more thing we need to do, as we mentioned earlier, and to make this a well-behaved application. And that's to make sure that our suspension handler um, gets called when the app is suspending. So that's it. Um, that's everything you need to know to write your RFCOM um, API. Uh, that's everything you know from the RFCOM uh, point of view to write your application for your RFCOM-based device. So wrapping things up, um, over the course of this session, 
Uh, we talked about what's now possible with the direct API access um, to the Bluetooth RFCOM API in the Windows runtime. Uh, we've discussed how this enables hardware developers like Orbotics with the Sphero uh, to allow others uh, to write applications to their device to create an ecosystem of applications. Uh, we also talked about how software app developers, um, from the professional to the hobbyist, can now write um, apps for a world of really powerful devices that use these technologies. And then, uh, most importantly, um, I hope we've demonstrated to you how simple this really is uh, to write a uh, Windows Store app using these APIs. OK, so here's a list of the previous sessions. Uh, that first one is the one that Dean and George just did. We also do have um, pre-recorded sessions for USB, HID, and of course, Bluetooth Smart. I know a lot of people are interested in that. Um, we have the developers for those uh, features uh, describing how to use their APIs. Um, there's some samples here. We have uh, our pre-release API reference, and then we have an RFCOM chat sample that goes through not just the client, but also the server role and SDP. And then um, Sphero will be putting their app sample as well as their SDK up on uh, the existing uh, Windows Store app samples page. This deck will be available online later, so you'll be able to get this information. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to thank Orbotics um, for bringing uh, the Peacekeeper and for providing app and SDK support. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. Um, we have some time left, so I'd like to use that time to give out some uh, build edition Spheros that we have. Uh, on your way in, if you, have, uh, if you received a ticket, please come up um, over here to this corner, and George and Dean are going to help uh, pass out these Spheros. You need to exchange your ticket. They're going to take your ticket, and you'll get the build edition Sphero. I will be here along with Lisa, one of our developers, and you can, for you to ask questions. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>